ان في خلق السماوات والارض واختلاف الليل والنهار لايات لاولي الالباب ذاك الكلينر تو كلين ذا هاوس So you're going to help your mom keep the house tidy. Yeah? Okay, so you you designed your own respiratory system. Yeah. Which organs are these? These things hanging here? Balloon. Yeah, what 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 does it represent? The balloons are, are representing which organ? Um, Is it the kidneys or the heart or the lungs. the lungs? Use for this thing. So then what's a diabetic? He's diabetic. He's diabetic, isn't he? And he has There is a wire attached to the battery, yes. to, the, to the switch and the motor. Okay. There is a wire switch from the switch to the motor. So when you push the button, it opens the switch. Yes. And it gets the blue and makes the switch. Very good. Don't do it. You put in a little bit of water, it will come in the Some seed. Some seed, and you put food inside there. It works, yeah. Oh. What have you cooked in there? This one you digest faster, but this one takes slower time to digest. Ah, it's moving. How is it moving? Show me. Aha. Oh, very good. Can, can you? What's your name? <laughs> That's good. Something's really good. Yeah, because it's aluminium. Fantastic. Brilliant. Whoa! Great strong. Like over here also. Very nice. Basically, the electrical energy passing through these two six volt batteries uh, is kinetic energy because of the flow of electrons, which then, uh, because of the formula mv squared, the kinetic energy then turns into the heat, and that's why we can then. But you can make some make it so hot. Uh, you can actually print te templates and then uh, cut around the template. That star? That star was from cutting with this? Yeah. yeah. Neat. Okay. Yeah. So you can make precise shapes and mm. okay. And you can actually make some random shapes like this. Caffeine <laughs> is a stimulant that affects the central nervous system. It is a white crystalline solid and it is part of the density group. Which is it's part of the Zantic group, it's like at the dinner it's also part of the Zantic group. Both of them have similar structure, and this is how the uh, caffeine gets to affect the body. Like here, they both have similar, similar structure and they both have urine. So, how caffeine enters the body, when you drink a drink that has caffeine in it, caffeine is, is absorbed by the small intestine and diffused through the blood and carried to, to the brain. And it diffuses into the brain through a semi permeable membrane called the blood brain barrier. Yeah, it, it can diffuse through the brain because it is water soluble and lipid soluble. Now, it takes approximately 45 minutes for caffeine to work and approximately 6 hours for caffeine to get eliminated. Now, how caffeine works is in synapses in the neurons, there are adenosine receptors. And adenosine binds to the receptors and this causes a cellular response that makes you drowsy. Because caffeine has a similar structure to adenosine, it can bind to the receptor and prevent adenosine from binding to the receptor and so therefore preventing you from getting drowsy. So when this happens, there's accumulation of adenosine that is not binded to the receptor. So when after six hours pass and caffeine is eliminated, there's like a lot of uh, adenosine and it binds to the receptors and it makes you even more drowsy than if you didn't drink uh, coffee or tea. Now there are positive and negative effects of caffeine. 
Positives include uh, increased alertness and decreased fatigue, and it's also used in medicine, such as help curing and preventing uh, breathing disorders in premature infants, and can be used with painkillers to cure migraines. And negative effects are like anxiety, increased vasoconstriction, and that increases the blood pressure, and also increased heart rate, and also stimulation of urination. And also, overdose of caffeine leads to death. And also, if someone is addicted to caffeine and he stops drinking coffee or tea, then he experiences withdrawal symptoms like irritability, unable to concentrate, depressed mood, and fatigue. And here there's a table that shows that how much caffeine per and milligrams is in one, uh, one cup of coffee or tea. So you can see from uh, decaffeinated coffee and coffee, there's a major difference. Like in in the coffee, there's 2 to 5 milligrams of caffeine, and coffee, there's 60 to 152. So now my colleague will explain how you extract caffeine from a process called decaffeination. This is the, how we extract the caffeine, and now and then will explain the process. Our extraction of caffeine is based on two major principles. It's called partition coefficient, and the boiling point of ethyl acetate, in which caffeine will dissolve at a lower boiling point, so it vaporizes, leaving us caffeine. So here's the extract of the coffee, a tea. Uh, this is tea, which has caffeine in it. So when we add, uh, this is how we got caffeine in the solution. And this is, after cooling down, we get this mixture. And then we add ethyl acetate into this separating funnel. And caffeine is more soluble in ethyl acetate than it is in the water, which is in the solution. Now water and ethyl acetate do not mix. So we have two layers. Can you see? So we extract the layer on top because that is methyl acetic, which has more caffeine in it. After we get our solution of methyl acetate, in which caffeine is dissolved, we vapor evaporate it, which uh, leaves us a residue of caffeine. Have you got some of the yeah. This was our try. Uh, um, it was white in the beginning, but after a day, it got uh, reddish. So how long does it take you to extract? The whole process takes about 30 to 35 minutes. Because, it takes, because we have to cool the mixes down, because ethyl acetate of, uh, has a low boiling point, so you can't mix it like with a hot liquid, it will just vaporize. Uh, yeah, we have to separate the tea, we have to separate tea from the salt, the uh, acetate, mixed with the coffee. So this is, there's a small layer from it, which is basically the ethyl acetate along with the coffee. This is the tea layer. Now here, now we have some tea layers. It's a bit small. It's a very small. small yeah, three minutes. Yeah, this is a little bit. Like 30 seconds, around the minutes. Uh, what I do here is that when I add the flour acetate, along with the tea or coffee, I sell it for a while, left it ventilated, uh, allowed it to get in and out. This question, Allowed the caffeine to mix with the ethyl acetate. This is more than I think it's visible now. Go to it. As we go down, it's going to be more visible. It does have a really pungent smell. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's just a good comfort. Yeah. But it's good. That's it. This is basically ethyl acetate with caffeine. So, yeah. We're going to have a little flask. Thank you. And we're going to repeat the processes uh, three times until evaporated. And then you have to put the water bottle, and we have a ready-made sample because it will take about 10 to 15 minutes. We made this turbine at home. It turns the magnets together with it. It's very close. It dissolves in electromagnetic induction, which makes electricity. Hydroelectricity actually contributes to 16.6% of electricity produced in 2015. And China is the greatest producer of hydroelectricity at the moment. 70% of all renewable energy 
about this hydro electricity in 2015. The budget is due to low cost because it's low CO2 emissions. Also, it can be made project specific at different size levels. And you can also change the amount you're producing depending on the amount of uh, energy in the world. What is in the tin? It's water. No, no, water. water. So this is steam. Okay. Sure. This is this is not a production of electricity. How is the electricity produced will be explained by time. First we started off by building this uh, using a cylindrical tap, uh, a cylindrical uh, sorry, a cylindrical tin. Uh, we drilled two holes in it. One was for for filling water in it, which is this one, using the syringe. Place it like that, and we fill it with water. The other, and then we close it. The other was used to, uh, to uh, for the steam to come out. We use the clamp and the stand to uh, set the uh, apparatus, and uh, then we uh, heated it using a uh, Bunsen burner. Uh, as it, as the water heats, uh, it generates uh, steam, uh, the water boils, and it uh, generates steam which comes out of this uh, small opening, generating uh, the electricity. Uh, rotating this motor here, uh, as you can see here, the motor, which is connected using wires to an uh, ammeter, which uh, uh, generates electricity. Uh, in, the, in the motor, uh, in the motor, there are, uh, there's a magnet which has electric, uh, which produces the magnetic field. Then there's a, uh, a coil of wire, which is. Do you know what are the advantages and disadvantages of electric motors and electric compressing engines? Look at how they work first. So, uh, at the beginning, the, this, the valve is open <coughs> to allow air and fuel mixture and it go inside the cylinder. This part is called the uh, combustion chamber because this is where the uh, combustion happens. After that, the cylinder rises up, the piston yeah. rises up so that the air fuel pressure is compressed before the ignition, which is done by the spark plugs. When this when the compression is complete, the spark plugs ignite the air fuel mixture, which causes the combustion. This compression reduces energy. This is the most important part. Because after the combustion happens, this pushes the piston downwards and causes the movement, which is actually needed. Now, this, the movement of the piston is downwards, but the actual movement needed for the car for actually to run is 
turning, rotating movement. And this is done by this part. This part is actually like, uh, this part is the main part which must turn. So this, is, this causes the up and down movement of the piston to be changed into rotating like this. After that is done, the exhaust gases must be taken out from the combustion chamber. This is done by the exhaust valve, and at that point, this exits. The exhaust gases exit. Now, actually, I've been doing this by my hand, but it works with something like this. These two are called cams. This is supposed to be the camshaft, which sticks in it. It's like a crankshaft, but it's, it, it, it also, it, its work is to rotate. So this should should work like this and uh, it should rotate and then should push down on the valve and move. Now the valve should be connected with uh, a spring which actually 